I hope this video works. Hey guys, it's my turn. Uh, I just wanted to talk with you about a thing I was thinking about. So it's this idea of making a change. Um, what I wanted to say about making a change is this. It's incredibly powerful if someone you know in your life uh, comes out and says that they're wanting to make a change in their life, be it health, mental or physical, um, be it you know job, relationship, uh, work, which is similar to job, uh, all sorts of different things. And I, I guess what I see in my life is I see so many people who are struggling right now. I see people who are in relationships that have been going poorly for years. I've seen pe see people who are unhappy with life and they use uh, substances to uh, cope. I see people who use t television and video games and workaholism to cope with life. Uh, I see friends who are stuck in sort of a pattern of, I still am living with my parents, I've been out of college a few years. I don't have a real job. I'm not really sure what to do or how to get out of it. And uh, historically, I've been someone that says, well, I'm gonna give you a bunch of advice. I'm gonna tell you, <clears throat> this is how you can fix it. This is how you can be better. And it's crazy. Uh, when I do this to people who haven't let me know that they're gonna be making a change in their life, the advice literally doesn't do anything. I would argue that if you have a friend that says, this is a really crappy thing that's happening to me, 99% of the time, they just need you to say, shoot, I'm sorry. Um, that's been my case with many of my friendships. But then I have one of my best friends has had a, a significant life change over the past year and a half. And he said, I want to make some changes. I want to learn about life. I want to learn about who I am. I want to go deeper on what happened. I want to go deeper on the person that I am and the person that I'm becoming. And he's, he's grown ridiculously in the past 18 months, and it's been an utter joy to watch him grow. Uh, so what gives us the ability to make a change? I think that there has to be some sort of catalyst to make that change. A lot of people are in this cyclical pattern, right? And they're, they're, nothing's, you know, nothing's going to change for them. They're kind of waiting for external circumstances to maybe change. And while I will say that over time things do move slowly at sort of a glacial pace, uh, that isn't the change that they're looking for. They're, they're hoping that something dramatic will happen, but they're not willing to make the change in themselves, in their own psyche, in their emotions, in their patterns and habits. Um, so my advice, if people come to me and they're like, what, what do I do in this thing? And it's, and it's sort of like, well, if you want to lose weight, you can go to Google and there's a thousand pages on how to lose weight. If you want to develop a habit where you are regularly training yourself to be better at something, there's ways to do that. There's books for that. There's people who will help you. But if it's like, hey, I'm doing this to myself, but I hate it. What do I do? I think my response is, I'm so sorry that that sucks. I love you and care about you. And it's, if they say, what do I do? I'll say, decide that you want to make the change. Um, but people need that catalyst. And that's why so many people wait for the catastrophic event to occur. I'm not sure that we can really make dramatic changes without either something very deep in our psyche changing or uh, some event happening that forces us to move. Um, you need energy you need some sort of catalyst or movement to give you energy to make that change. And I'm not sure without it, it's that any change will be lasting or possible. Um, so how can we love ourselves better? How can we love our friends better? I think it's giving ourselves and our friends a lot of patience and grace to be where they're at. Uh, they're there for a reason. Their, their parents raised them in a certain way. They, their siblings or lack thereof had a dynamic that had them in a certain way. They were either homeschooled or public schooled or not schooled or dropouts or Ivy League grads or whatever. All of that impacts them greatly. And therefore, the things that they struggle with, their coping mechanisms are all due to those environmental factors they have growing up. I think, yeah, sure, in your late 20s, 
uh, where I'm at, you can start to give people a lot more autonomy, like, hey, you do have a choice. Everyone does have a choice, but there's so much more than just the choice. Uh, I keep think, going back to weight. I mean, there's a brilliant podcast by um, NPR, uh, This American Life, and they just did one called Tell Me I'm Fat, and it was four different people talking about uh, being overweight or losing weight and what that means and how that happened and why. And you can't just tell a fat person like, oh, well, you just skip soda, skip beer, go low on the, you know, go low on the carbs, eat more vegetables and meat uh, and work out and you'll be good. Sure, that's, the answer is not wrong, okay? But that's not, you can't just do that. I mean, that's a huge change that removes all sorts of pleasure zones that you would have gotten from eating sugar and, and all of all of the other tasty foods that you have. There is happiness gained from that. I mean, eating away your feelings is a real deal. I mean, it is a coping mechanism. So there has to be a catalyst on someone's end to make the change for themselves. Uh, I have a family member that struggles with depression and he's uh, he's been in the throes of it for about 18 months. He had a really good year and then uh, tried to wean himself out, off antidepressants and um, just found that holy shit, um, I'm back exactly where I started, you know, a few years back where he was just really not doing well. And I can't go to him and say, well, you should just will yourself out of this thing. There's so many other factors than just, hey, you need to like take care of yourself. You need to make the change. There has to be a catalyst. And I'm not r ruling out the catalyst can be other people, but you can't make a decision for someone. I can't make a decision for someone. However, I look at someone coming out, going back to the beginning of this video, I look at someone coming out and saying, I want to make a change. That's that seed that you just, just planted in the soil. You can't step on the soil. You can't refuse to water it and say, you gotta be tough seed. You say, oh my gosh, you're trying to find a job that's gonna be a great fit for you for the rest of your life because you're working at you know, Walmart right now and it's not going very well and you want to find something you're passionate about. Okay. like. You want to make that change make man let me let me pour some water on that you know what what are you doing for yourself to find that job oh you're doing this this and this and then they ask you well what else could I be doing okay wow thanks for asking I'm you know I'm honored that you would ask me have you looked at our local uh, job board website for our local government we have one did you know that we have one no I didn't crazy okay here you go boom 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 um, that ask towards us people who love to give advice that ask towards us is so much more precious than we give it time and attention for it. It's really precious and they're inviting you into their lives and that's precious too. How often do I ask for feedback from other people? How often do I respect people enough to ask for feedback? How often enough am, am I willing to hear what people have to say? So when people come to me and ask for advice, I need to, this is a reminder video for myself, I need to respect the fact that, wow, someone's willing to say, Jordan, I respect you enough to ask you into my life and to speak on something in my life. And to, and to even hear what you have to say. That means that they respect me. That's crazy, I mean, that's beautiful. I guess we don't, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't think we value that highly enough that really like us interacting in each other's lives is a beautiful and precious thing and it's fragile. And uh, in relationship, it's, it can be so damaging if we do it poorly, if we step over people's wants and dreams, if they plant the seed and we say, ah, I refuse to water you, you know, you teach, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach him to fish, you know, feed him for a lifetime kind of attitude where it's like, you know, I'm just going to teach you to solve the problem yourself. I mean, it's both, right? We want to be gentle. We want to be nurturing. And we also want to say, ultimately, you know, you have to value yourself. You have to look out for you. No one's going to do it for you. And there's this sort of autonomy, but also recognizing the factors that we come from that, uh, that really comes together. If someone wants to improve their life, wants to make a change, wants to pursue their dream, wants to leave that relationship that feels toxic um, and we can give them love and support to do that well and to do that rightly and to do that in a way that honors people involved. Uh, so that's, those are my thoughts about making a change. Um, I love you guys. I have no idea if this angle is pointed correctly because I'm using the back uh, camera facing on my camera. So this might not even be pointed at my face and this could be a totally washed up video. All right, guys, it's my turn. Love you. Bye.